Well, howdy. Welcome to the Bender Bunker, your online resource for B-Bender Country Guitar since 2017. And all I've got to say is, uh, hey, hippie, get a haircut. And if that phrase means anything to you and you recognize that opening music, then like me, you may be a fan of the Bird's classic song, Ballad of Easy Rider, which we'll be doing a deep dive on to cover all those Bender parts you just watched. I'll be going over those in great detail as we kick off our first full lesson of year number seven of the bunker here on YouTube. And I can't think of a better way than to kick it off in this fashion with a nice Bird's Influence Bender lesson. Now, I want to remind you, this is going to be a, a pretty long lesson. We've got a lot to cover, a lot of Bender parts to go over. But you're in the driver's seat. You get to navigate as you see fit with your mouse and the chapter headings at the bottom of your screen. So you can skip the talking. You can jump to the sections of the Bender parts you want to learn first. If you don't want to go chronologically, you're in control with those chapter headings. And I, I think I speak for all of us as YouTube viewers. Every video is a little bit improved when they have chapter headings. Am I right? All right, so basically, how did we get there to that opening? What's that all about? You know, the original version of the song starts on the Easy Rider movie soundtrack back in 69 as an acoustic version with harmonica. There's no bender on that. Uh, they go into the studio, they do an electric version. There's no bender on that. It got pulled off and had strings put on top of it. That's what a lot of folks probably think of when they think of the studio version. Uh, you, there is a version with Clarence White playing bender on the studio version that the strings were placed. That comes out decades later on a deluxe version. Uh, that's pretty interesting. That's called the long version. You can hear that on YouTube, I believe. I've heard it there. And uh, it, interesting. It's in the pocket. It's tasteful. But th there's nothing he's playing that's taking the song to a next level or changing it in any way. The strings, I guess, are already imprinted in my head. But like so much Bird's music, if you want to get involved with what Clarence White is doing on his Bender guitar, you've got to go to the live versions. And that's what's in my head. I've had a live version on my Birds playlist of this for like probably the last 10 years. I'll put a quick link to that in the comment section. Top comment will be from me. I'll pin a link to the YouTube version that I have in my Birds playlist. And that's where Clarence finally gets to step out and play whatever he wants, solo section on his Bender guitar. So I've really studied a lot of live versions, taken a few parts I heard him return back to. He tried a lot of different things because he wasn't tied down to the studio version he got kicked off of. So he's trying different things, but he always comes back to a few touchstone parts of the solo. I grab those, put them in there. But really what I'm doing there in that opening is trying to take the Bender Bunkers version of uh, what we might play over it, trying to keep the same theme, the vibe, the feel of the birds, and including some of the Clarence White parts from some of those live versions. So that's what you heard there in the intro. So this is a lot to cover. And uh, that's an interesting opening. It kind of turned into a hymnal at the end there. It felt like a hymnal to me, which wasn't surprising. As I was watching a lot of those live versions on YouTube, I was reading the comments underneath. And a lot of folks, more than one folks, said they wanted this song played at their funeral. So I think they view it as a hymn as well. So with that in mind, let's turn to page 29 of your hymnal. Let's not do that. Let's get the motorcycle helmet painted with the American flag. Let's get the Bender guitar, fire up the choppers, and head out on the Bender Highway as we deep dive this lesson of the Ballad of Easy Rider coming up next here at the Bender Bunker. Well, okay, looks like you're ready to head down the Bender Highway with me as we tackle the Ballad of Easy Rider together. Nice to have you on board as my wingman. You know, it reminds me of uh, what a drug dealing acquaintance once told me way back in the early 80s when we were starting a car trip and pulling the car on the highway ourselves. He leaned over and said, remember, you always go forward, but you never go straight. That's right. I was riding with Tom Waits. I don't know what that voice was, but that's what he said. Before we get rolling with the first note and the first bend, I do want to remind you, like any other YouTube channel that's trying to grow, we could use your support. I'm going to tempt you with the top three ways to do so. First of all, if you could give us a quick thumbs up, if you're enjoying the content, looking forward to the lesson, let's let that YouTube algorithm know that you enjoy B Bender guitar. You'd like to see a little bit more of it in your feed, whether it be me or somebody else playing it. And we'll see if our small thumbs can have a large impact. Secondly, we are trying to grow the channel so we could use all the subscribers we can get. So if you enjoy this kind of content, consider that subscription button waiting for you in the bottom corner of your screen. That way we continue to grow and you don't miss anything moving forward. And then finally, if you'd like to buy the band a beer, remember when you used to do that? You'd go to live shows, the band would be fun. They'd come off the stage, you'd want to buy them a beer. I used to get beers when I was in bands. I enjoy that part. Well, now it's like this. It's virtual. It's a virtual beer donation, and that is done through the Bender Bunkers PayPal account, the link for which is always in the details section below this video, below all our videos. 
And there's a new wrinkle to that I got to talk about briefly that just started here as year number seven kicks off with this lesson. We have the Thank You Licks program now, which means anybody donating $5 or more to the bunker via PayPal is going to get an email back with a link to a private Bee Bender Lick lesson on YouTube. You're going to need that link to get there, but it's on YouTube. And I'm going to walk you through a Lick lesson, Bee Bender Lick lesson that uh, is just for you. And if you buy two beers, you donate $10 or more then you're gonna get two bee bender licks to work on. That's where, you know, you say thank you for the content, we say thank you back with more licks and it, com it completes the circle of gratitude. And I don't know what that is, but it sounds good. I think we could go somewhere with the circle of gratitude. So again, that's the thank you licks. If you wanna learn more about that, when this video is over, just go down below the video, you see that circle with the Fender Pint glass and then the name of the Bender Bunker, click on that, you go to our main YouTube channel page and there you're gonna see the top video above all the other videos. I think it even starts playing automatically. That's gonna explain all the details of the Thank You Lick program that you'll need to know. It's a quarterly program, new Thank You Licks every three months. Okay, that's it. It's time to move on and start the Ballad of Easy Rider. All right, chapter one of the lesson. In this chapter, we're covering the backing tracks that we're playing over. Very important to know what your backing tracks are doing, right? Because it so often dictates what you're gonna do on your bender. And then we're also gonna cover the two little bender parts I play in what we call the intro and the outro, where the song's vamping between two chords, E and A in this case, and the intro and the outro are the same. So you learn one, you get both. Now, the studio version of the song's in D. The live version that I kind of work off in my head that's linked in the comment section, they bumped up to E. So I'm gonna be doing it in E, and that's what you heard in the intro. So let's walk over these chords, because I'm gonna be frequently calling out the chord changes moving forward in this lesson. As I show you what the bender parts are doing, I'm calling out well, this is because the chord is changing too, so let's go over the chords. Now, I know this isn't exactly how the birds played it, but I think it's more than sufficient for what we're gonna do in this lesson, and it's what you've already heard in the intro. So here we are, we're gonna start in the dominant key of E. I'll call out the chords as we go. We're going to B. Down to A. And the only minor, F sharp minor. Back to B. Playing with the top two strings open, and then it vamps between E and A. And there'll be a sequence where it goes back to the F sharp minor to B. So those are all the chords you need to know, and the ones I'll be calling out as we go over the various bender parts in the chapters ahead. Now, the two bender parts I played in the intro and the outro are these. knock those out real quick. We're in E, so we're gonna take a D chord shape and just move it up two to B and E, right? That makes sense. And then that uh, only thing we're gonna, once we make that chord position with our fingers, we're only gonna be varying the middle finger there on the high E fourth off and on during this lick, all right? So we've got that in place. Just plant that third and second string there. They're not moving for the duration here. We're gonna go ahead and pick the third and second string together, take our bender up. So they're ringing together. Now I'm going High E fourth, right back to third string, come back to the high E open this time, and then B string, let the bender down, and then third string. That's all it is, but when you do it up to speed, it sounds like this. Now this next one is this. What that is, I need you to take your ring finger on the third string ninth and your index finger on the B string seventh and plant them there, leave them there for the duration. We're gonna hit those two together, third and second string, leaving the high E open and take the bender up and hold it like we did before. Now do another note on your third string and then let your little finger do what it wants to do, which is drop right down there for a note on the B string 10th. And as you hit that note, let the bender down. Bender's unengaged now, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit the second string back into the third string. And go right back to your B string, your second string, hit it, take the bender up. And then high E that's open, come back to the B string and let it down. And then end on the third string ninth. Up to speed, it sounds like this. Then I do, in the intro, you hear me end with two harmonics right before the song really kicks in. Those are on the first and second string up here on the 12th fret. Again, these are harmonics, not actual notes. So I'm right on the fret wire, I'm not pressing down. I'm starting with the high E. I am pre-engaging the bender, very important. Starting with the high E, then going to the B string, hitting that harmonic and letting the bender down. And then we 
kick into the song. All right, chapter one, let's move on. All right, chapter two, the song's really getting going now. We're in the meat of the matter, and we are starting things off in E, the dominant key, with a five-note sequence. And on the fourth of the five notes, we are taking the bender up and down. Sounds like this. And that is done out of the E bender box. Now, before I go much further, I want you to concentrate on two things in this chapter, okay? What the bender itself is doing, that's here on the strap, up and down, up and down. And then I've got, of course, what my fret hand's doing. Don't worry so much about what the pick hand's doing yet, because we're gonna circle back at the end of this chapter what we call pick hand cam. You're gonna see what it's doing up nice and close, very slow and detailed, okay? So for now, concentrate on the bender and what my fret hand's doing. So we also need to learn the E bender box, as we've been calling it here for years, because we're going to be using this quite a bit for future chapters as well. And the bender box is a four note pattern, starting with your index finger on the top two strings of the seventh, and then on the third and fourth strings on the ninth with your little finger and ring finger. So four notes. Bender box for E. And that's where this five note opening pattern starts on. So make that position and just anchor it there for me. I'm gonna call out the strings, the four strings I'm plucking in sequence so you can follow along. I'm starting on the fourth string, going right up to the first string. Third string. And then that fourth note I told you about, B string, take the bender up and down. Then come back to your third string. Those are the five opening notes. And they're all ringing together nicely as they should. Now we're not done with E yet. The backing track's still in E. So what I'm doing is similar to what we did in the chapter before us, I go up to the top two strings for harmonic notes. This time I'm reversing the order though. I'm starting with the second string on the 12th. Again, these are harmonics, not actual press down notes. So I'm making the harmonics on the, the B string 12th, taking the bender up, holding it, and then hitting the high E harmonic next to it. Now they're ringing nicely together. Backing and the bender still engaged. Backing track's going to B, so I'm gonna do my first thing in B now. What am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna take my middle finger down to the third string, would that be eighth? And then I'm going to go ahead and hit that note. At the same time, I'm picking the open B string next to it and letting the bender down. Sounds like this. Because we're in B now. So coming out of those harmonics. If you do it right, you still got your high E harmonic bending along or ringing along with you, I should say. We've got one more thing to do in B because we're still in B on the backing track. It's this sequence. I'm going to leave my middle finger right where it is on the third string eighth and do this. So again, I'm starting with my middle finger on the third string eighth, one note. As I pick that note, I'm pre-engaging the bender as well. See? All right, so then one note on the high E ninth with my little finger, come right back to the third string, go back to the high E but open, and then let your index finger fall down on the B string seventh for a note and bringing the bender down with it, and the end where you started on your third string eighth, because you never moved your middle finger. Up to speed, that sequence sounds like this. And they should all trying to be ringed together. That's part of the fun. And that's in B. Now the back and track's going to A for the first time. So we are going to just take that shape and move it down here. And we're gonna think, I want you to think about the top three strings of an A bar chord. Would be those. So the index finger's covering the top two on the fifth and my middle finger's on the third string six. I'm gonna come off this section I just did for the B. Make those three note pattern right there. I'm gonna go ahead by starting uh, the third and second string together, hitting those two and taking the bender up, holding the bender together, holding it up, I should say. And then I'm gonna just walk down on the high E, one, two, three, down. So I took three and two strings up, held the bender, and I walked back down, one, two, three, starting at the high E. Go up to the high E, seventh for a note with my little finger. That comes off for the high E fist, still covered. Then the B string to let the bender down. And then we end right there on the third strings, six. That's all that sequence is for A. Up to speed, it's more. Bender's engaged, bender's unengaged, but when we're done. Now, the backing track's going to that one minor chord, the F sharp minor, so we've gotta do something appropriate. And what I did in the intro, very easy to where we are. I try to keep things ergonomically uh, easy for us. I'm gonna leave my middle finger right where it is on the third string six, and just put my ring finger right next to it on the B string seventh. So now I've got these two notes. 
and I'm gonna be alternating with my index finger on the high E fifth and open. And this pattern for F sharp minor is gonna be. So again, I am starting with the three and two strings picked together, taking the bender up. Index finger, high E fifth for note. Come right back to the third string. Back to the high E, you guessed it, open. And then the B string to hit the, the note and let the bender down. And then the third string. That's that sequence. Bender goes up, bender comes down. And that's your F sharp minor. Backing track's going to B. We're gonna do something very simple for B. We're going to do the top three strings of the B bender box. We were just up here in E doing the, that. We're now gonna do it in B. So I'm letting my index finger go down to the top two strings on the second and my ring finger on the third string fourth. Top three strings for B bender box. So I'm gonna, I'll show you what it sounds like coming out of that F sharp move we just learned into the B I just showed you. So what I did is I came out of that F sharp move. But it's unengaged. I'm moving down positioning to that B bender box I just showed you. But before I make any noise down there, I'm pre-engaging the bender. Once I get down there, have that shape and the bender pre-engaged, I'm just gonna walk it down starting on the high E string. One, two, three on the strings, letting the bender down when I pick the second string. That's all it is. And the bender's unengaged. All right, pack the set sequence because now we're gonna move into what I would call the chorus sequence. Now the chorus sequence I'm referring to goes back to the E bender box and is one of the parts I mentioned in the intro that I kept hearing Clarence White return to in both the deluxe studio version and the multiple live versions I listened to. He's going to the E bender box and working a few notes that I best would describe as mimicking what the vocals are doing, the melody of the song where the river flows and it sounds like this. <laughs> Right, a very obvious vocal melody. So how do we get from the B section into that, right? So we just did Bender's unengaged, and we have to get back up here to the B, or the E Bender box. So we just came off B, it's ringing. I'm gonna take my middle finger and I'm gonna get back up here because I need to be on the four and two strings to get this party started back up in E, okay? So I'm coming off the B, sliding up to the four string ninth with my middle finger, and then my index finger's falling on the second string, seventh. I'm sliding up, you're gonna hear that slide and you're gonna hear me hit the note on the four string ninth, and then I'm immediately go up and pick the index finger on the B string seventh and take the bender up slowly. Mm -hmm. And let the four and two strings ring together as I do that. Bender uh -huh. still engaged. Now I need you to just do a keep the bender engaged, do a slight repositioning of your fingering to get back to the original E bender box we started with early in this chapter. That's gonna be easy with the index finger, just let that fall on the top two on the seventh. Reposition a little bit. We're gonna do back to the little finger on the third string ninth and the ring finger on the fourth string ninth. So now we've got that original E bender box we learned earlier in this chapter. Bender's still engaged because we just took that second string up. We're just going to walk it down now. It's just that simple. Starting on your high E, when you get to the second string, you let the bender down and you just go third and fourth string of this shape. So up slowly with the bender on the four two strings. And then down with the E bender box shape. Now you do it again because that's what the song does. And again, I... You can do anything you want here. You get to salt and pepper to taste, as I like to say. You bend, pick, and, and phrase it the way you feel it and the way you want to mimic that vocal melody. Okay, so that is the chorus part, for better lack of a better term, in E. So now the song is gonna to go to that F sharp minor again. We're gonna do. And so what that is, is we go back to the same root position we were using before earlier in this chapter for the F sharp minor, right? And that is your middle finger on the third string six and your ring finger next to it on the B string seventh. And we're gonna be using the high E seventh, fifth, and open. I'm using my little finger on the seventh, index finger on the fifth, and of course just open strings on that for this pattern. Again, pick the three and two strings together, take the bender up, hold it. And then I'm gonna show it to you, and this will make more sense when we end up with pick hand cam later at the end of this chapter. Start with your seventh, with your little finger. So 
So I'm going seventh with my little, uh, high E fifth with my index, and then the open E string. One thing to listen for in this picking pattern is I'm doing two notes on the seventh, two notes on the fifth, and that open is only getting one on the open E string before I go right back to the B string to let the bender down. One. Now we're gonna go back to B, very similar to what we did in B before, the B bender box, right? So let's, this is what we learned before, except this time I want you to make that B bender box but leave the high E string open. We're gonna use it open initially instead of covering it there on the second fret. So again, index finger, second string, second fret, and ring finger, third string, fourth and the high E open. So what did I just do? That's what I'm doing there. So when we get down there and I've got that high E open, again, we're gonna to go to B. I'll hit the three and two strings together, take the bender up, hold it for a second. Now just walk down, starting on the high E open, and then go two, th one, two, three, starting on your high E. Then you're still engaged. Then go back to the high E, but this time let your your index finger cover the second fret, make that full B bender box like we did before, and then go one, two, starting on the high E. When you get to the second note, let the bender down. So. And then we're going to finish B by doing this four note sequence. bender involved. What that is is the top three notes of a B bar chord coming out of the B section. I'm sliding up there and again index finger is going to be covering the top two on the seventh and middle fingers one above and on the third string eighth. Top three strings of B bar chord. That's four notes and it's starting on the third string uh, what would that be eighth. So I'm sliding up with the middle finger. That's the, and I'm doing that top three string pattern like I just talked about. Third string eighth. Then I'm just doing, that's one. And then I'm work, walking down from the high E. One, two, three. All right, now we're back to E. And all we gotta do is look, we're just one step away from changing this third string finger. I'm gonna just change that over to my ring finger there on the third string ninth. We've got the top three strings of the E bender box again that we're going to be using frequently and then I'm just going to hit the three and two strings and change from B to E like this. So I went from B to E with my bender. So coming out of that B section down here. Bender's engaged. To get it unengaged and get out of the section, I'm just going to walk it down from the high E string. One, two, three, letting the bender down. So that is everything you need to know for what I'll call the first half of the solo. Now let's go to pick hand cam and dive in a little bit closer to what pick hand's doing and play the whole thing a lot slower. All right, here we go with pick hand cam for the chapter. Keep in mind, this entire lesson is being picked with my thumb and my index finger alternating. So if you're never quite sure which of the two fingers it is, you always have a 50-50 chance of being right. We are going to start off things with that E bender box, the five note sequence to kick off the chapter. And I am hitting the first note with my thumb. I'm going to pick everything nice and slow. So here we go. Two fingers together. This will be the hardest uh, picking pattern of the sequence is that F-sharp minor. I'll play it real quick for you. Again, you're anchoring there, but it's really that high E 7th, 5th, and open E that we're alternating with on that pattern. And then uh, 
It's two notes on the high E7, two notes on the fifth, and one note on the open E. I will say when you get into that pattern and you start on the high E7, you're going right into it when you take the bender up. Alright, the final chapter is we break down the second half of the main solo. Now we're going to come out of the gates on this chapter, tipping the hat immediately to the great Clarence White. I definitely borrowed this lick from him. Now keep in mind, Clarence started playing in early 68, if I have my facts right, and he starts working on this song in 69. He's only been a Bender player for about a little over a year at that point. And so this is a signature lick of Clarence. So you're going to recognize it. You probably already did from the intro. I call it a pedal steel influenced lead in. That's how I think of it. Nine notes of glory with the eighth note being where the bender gets involved. It's this one. Yep, believe it or not, that's nine notes. And then I immediately go to another section I borrowed from a Clarence Live version, this one. Five notes to follow it okay so let's learn that that'll be our we're back in E so this is going to be our E section before we go back to B okay so here we go you're definitely going to learn, learn this one if you don't have it already and we're going to start on the fourth string eighth one pick and then roll the nine then we immediately go over to the third string and I'm going to be on the six pick one pick and roll eight nine six eight nine we've done five of nine notes now look where my uh, ring finger is. It's right there perfectly on the third string ninth. That allows me to drop my index finger on the top two and the seventh. We are again making the top three strings of the E bender box. And we are working that bad boy like it owes us money. And so then we are going to go ahead. Now we've got our index finger there on the top two and the seventh. One note on the B string. Come back immediately to the third string ninth. And then go back to the B string right away and take the bender up. So that must mean we're on the eighth note. And then that last note is number nine on the high E7. So. Just work on to you have second nature. And get them all ringing together. Okay, now I'm going to let the bender come down quietly because now I need to do a five note sequence because I'm still in E and I'm going to do this one. Again, borrowed that one from Clarence as well. And so I'm taking my middle finger on the four string nine and my little middle finger four string nine and my little finger is going to the B string 10. Sounds horrible till you get the bender involved. And so now I'm gonna start on that four string nine for one note, immediately go over to the B string 10th and take the bender up. They can ring together, that works. You guessed it, the index finger is gonna fall naturally on the top two on the seventh. And then I'm just gonna walk it down with the bender. High E, B string, let the bender down. And yep, ring finger goes back to where it belongs on the third string ninth. And that's your five note pattern. All together. That's E. Now it's time to follow the backing track to the magical land of B. And what we're gonna do there is what we did before. Why mess up a good thing? So I'm just gonna go ahead and let my middle finger do where it's already positioned actually, which is go ahead and make a fret on the third string eighth. And then I'm gonna have the B string open next to it. I'm gonna pre-engage quietly and I'm gonna pick the third and second string together. Again, second strings open and let the bender down. Works so well for B. All right, we're not out of B yet. Last time we did this, we did. Let's do that again, except change one thing. Instead of the high E being open on the sequence, let's do the high E on the seventh fret. Again, that would mimic a B bar chord, so that's gonna work nicely for us. So we're gonna go, remember we just did this. Bender's unengaged. So now I'm gonna go back to that third string eighth for a note, immediately go up to the high E ninth. Come back to the third string pre-engaged and I'm just going to let my little finger follow as it has been on the top two and the seventh work it down and it comes down as I did before when I hit that very first note of the sequence for this part of B uh, that third string uh, what is that eighth third string eighth I may have said seven before if I did I apologize that is third string eighth 
I'm also pre-bending. And then we'll hop up to that high E9, come right back to the third string. Drop your index top two on the seventh, work your way down from the high E, get to the B string, let the bender down. All right, we're done with B, we're going to A. Last time we went to A, we just did the top three strings of an A bar chord and did. What we're gonna do this time is definitely change it up, right? But we're still gonna start with the top three strings of the A bar chord. So index finger there and then the middle finger one up on the third string six. So let's go ahead and pick the three two strings together. And then one quick note on the high E seventh with my little finger. Come right back to the third string. And then let's go to the high E B string. Let the bender up and down, or down and up. So here's what we have. Now, to make this different, I'm gonna take my index finger completely off the frets, and now the top two strings are open, and I'm gonna go open high E to open B and let the, the B string down. My uh, ring finger's ready to go over to the four string ninth, excuse me, four string seventh. And now I'm making this, the, uh, you know, the main chords of an A bar chord right there. So that sequence together again. And that's our new A for the second half of the solo. Now, back in track spins that brief moment in F sharp minor. Here's what we did last time. Let's just do it again. I liked it so much the first time, let's do it again. If you need to learn it note for note, go back to the last chapter, but here it is. And then we go quickly to B. We used the B bender box to our advantage last time. I'm gonna do that again. Again, if you need the notes, go back to the last chapter. It's all together. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the chorus. You already know this from the last chapter. Back to the E bender box. Now what I did in the intro is I purposely did a variation and I'll show you that. So we do the first one straight as you know as we did before. Actually not straight as I told you at the beginning we got to go forward. Ooh, a callback. Now I'm going to go Here's the variation. the E bender box going, the bender engaged. I'm keeping my index finger where it is, top two on the seventh. I'm doing one quick note on the high E ninth. Coming right back to the B string, high E. And then I'm going to the B string. And then I've got my uh, ring finger ready to go back to third string ninth. And then I go back to the B string and take the bender up again. So that's. So now we're gonna go to what I'm gonna call the big lick. We're gonna finish strong on this chapter. I really enjoyed writing it and playing it, but as I did so initially, I thought, wow, that's gonna be really fun to teach. Let's see how I do, coming up next. Okay, we're one lick away from finishing this lesson. Now, uh, it's a mighty lick, though. I probably should've made this its own lesson. Sounds like this. Okay, so let's knock this out, shall we? We're gonna start in the F sharp minor position we already know and love. So I've got my middle finger on the third string six and the ring finger right next to it on the B string seventh, right? Let's anchor there for a second. Watch what the bender does. Again, don't worry about the pick hand yet. Watch what the bender does. He does a little bit in the very short time here. It goes up, it comes down and finishes back up, okay? So here we go, we've got that position. We're gonna be working alternating the high E fifth with our index finger and the open string. High E, that's what you're hearing. So we go up with the three, two string together. High E fifth, come back to the third string. High E open, and then we go to the B string to pick it and go up and down with the bender. Or excuse me, down, because we're already up, back up. So. And we finish engaged on the bender. They're all ringing together, that's what we want. We can now hop up to unengage the bender with this three note pattern. 
now the bender's unengaged. And what that is is high E, ninth, B string 10th, third string 11th. So we come into it and we just walk it down from the high E, and when we get to the B, we let the bender down. And the bender's unengaged. Now we're gonna do some work in what I will call, because it is the octave high A bender box. So it just came out of that three note pattern. I'm gonna let my index finger slide into the top two and cover the top two on the 12th. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick that B string, take the bender up, do a quick note on the high E 14th, come right back to the B string, go to the high E 12th already covered, back to the B string to let the bender down. And then I'm gonna use either my middle finger or ring, you can do whatever, I'll probably go middle, that is gonna be third string 14th. So we just did. Now the bender's unengaged. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take my index finger off, leave the top two strings open. Take the B string open up. With the bender, when I get to the top of that bend, I hit the high E open next to it as well. So you've got top two strings open and the third string covered on the 14th. Now what I'm gonna do with the bender engaged is to unengage it, I'm gonna drop my index finger back down to where it was on the B string 12th. I've already got the third string 14th covered. I'm gonna hit those two, the two and three strings together twice and let it down, let the bender unengage on the second one. So that sequence again. Okay, so now we're gonna hop way up here for this sequence. That is gonna be my ring finger on the B string 17th and my middle finger on the third string 100 on the 16th. Those notes. Go ahead and make that position, pick them together and take the bender up. And then let it down. Pre-engage and come down here for this. So we start there, pick it, go up and down on the bender come down here, pre-engage. Now I've got my index finger where it was before, B string 12th, middle finger on the third string 13th, so that two note pattern. And I'm gonna pick them twice, laying the bender down on the second one. Then I go down, and yes, you guessed it, the second and third string of the E bender box. So index finger on the seventh, ring finger on the ninth. Pre-engage, do the same thing. Those two strings together. When I come down on that second one, bender's unengaged, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a note there on the third string ninth. And then I take my index finger off and just ever so slightly hit that, it really jumps out if you hit it too hard, hit that open B string and take the bender back up and down on the bender. Let it ring with the third string ninth. So that sequence again. Repeat it. And then I do the intro outro vamps that I showed you in chapter one. And we, my friends, are done. So ends the bird lessons to kick off year number seven here at the Bender Bunker. I hope if you stuck with me, good for you. I appreciate the support. And again, don't sleep on that Thank You Licks program. Check it out on our main channel page. It's a great way to pick up uh, throughout the 2024 year. You can pick up eight more licks through the Thank You program with those donation options. And that'll be on our main channel page. So be sure you check that out. I hope you enjoyed this. I sure enjoyed this song and, and, and had a great time bringing it to you. I'll see you again real soon, but let's go ahead and end with the motto, shall we? It's never too late to go on a bender. I certainly hope you do. And I'll see you real soon with another lesson here as we kick off this new year at the Bender Bunker. Until then, keep it bent. Okay, here we go. Pick hand cam for chapter two. Remember, we are only using our thumb and our index finger. Here we go. Thank you.